it's truly an honor for me to introduce a friend of Missouri, our best and brightest, and one who will put the future first, Roy Blunt. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Mary. You know, we have tough jobs to do in uh, southeast Missouri. We just call on Mary Caston, whether it's to run in a special election and go back to the House after some time away from there and stay just long enough to get them straightened out or uh, uh, to introduce me today. And I, I stand looking at Mary wondering how I'd look in that jacket. I, I, I decided not nearly as good, not nearly as good as you do. <laughs> well, I've been announcing today, I saw the banner the first time this morning, the one that says, uh, Roy Blunt for U.S. Senate. I hadn't seen it till today, and so I just stood and looked at it uh, uh, for a while. Uh, but I'm announcing I'm running for the Senate. The furthest thing from my mind politically seven weeks ago was to run for the Senate. Uh, I was confident that Kit Bond was going to run again, and I couldn't have been more pleased to be represented by Kit Bond uh, than I was. In fact, those of us uh, including, again, a lot of people in this room who've watched Senator Bond over the last uh, several years in the Senate. Uh, the one thing I always noticed uh, and, and believed about Kit Bond was he was the Missouri senator. No matter what else anybody else was doing, he was going to be the guy in there fighting to be sure that Missouri got its fair share. And whether it was the highway bill or some public works project uh, or, or assistance for our law enforcement agencies, you could count on Kit Bond being sure that Missouri was well represented uh, in the Senate. Uh, and then, in the last few years, he's added to that an incredible credential of understanding how dangerous the world is as the leading Republican on the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence. And I was very happy to be represented in the Senate uh, by Kit Bond. And in fact, seven weeks ago, I was trying to figure out how, having had the experience I'd had in Washington of being a leader in the majority, being a legislator every day, how I could have the most legislative impact right now. So I focused back on the Energy and Commerce Committee that deals with energy, that deals with health care, that deals with telecommunications, supposedly the committee that would deal with about 70 percent of the Obama agenda. Uh, I took a seat on the House Select Committee on Intelligence to follow up on work I'd done there, uh, and then Kit Bond announced he wasn't running. And my view that very first day was it's absolutely critical that we hold on to these 41 Republican uh, seats in the Senate. Uh, as you and I know, and as all Missourians will know by Election Day 2010, those 41 seats in the Senate are the difference in national Democrats being able to do whatever they want to do uh, and having a speed bump uh, that makes it possible to step back and look at what might be the better bipartisan solution. In fact, we saw last week what happens when uh, those 41 Republicans uh, don't hold together in the Senate, and the truth is really bad things happen. And really bad things happened last year when this 1,100-page so-called stimulus bill was shoved through the House and Senate with, I guarantee you, not a single member of either body having read it. Uh, and um, I voted against it. All the Republicans in the House voted against it. And all the Republicans in the Senate voted against it, except for three. Uh, and when you subtract uh, those three out, suddenly that obstacle, that speed bump that's so important that we keep there is not there. And so I said the first day, it's important to keep those 41 seats. I am, I am for whoever is the best person to win this seat as a Republican in our state, unless that's me, and then I want to think about it. Uh, and uh, as I've talked to others, as I've thought about it over the, over the weeks since then, I I've decided, frankly, that this is the right thing to do and I'm the right person to do it. And so I'm here to tell you today that I need your help. I'm here to tell you that I think I'm the, the right person because in, in my time in Washington and serving in Missouri uh, and even, even uh, serving as a university president, I I've had to take stands for the right things that Missourians believe in and stick with them. Uh, and whether it was uh, the right tax policy for families, uh, the right energy policy for our state, uh, working for the Combat Meth Act, seeking bipartisan solutions. Uh, I know this is one of the counties in the, in the state where the Combat Meth Act really made a big difference. And now we need to figure out what comes next. And that had to be bipartisan. In fact, when we were in the majority, 
everything had to be bipartisan. Uh, because we had such narrow majorities, we could never pass a bill in the House except the budget that didn't have some Democrats voting for it. You know, the bipartisan vote last week was all of the Republicans and seven Democrats voting no, and then the rest of the Democrats easily passing the bill in the House, and on the Senate side, all of the Democrats and three of the Republicans uh, voting yes. Uh, bipartisan solutions are different than like the Speaker of the House saying last week, we won the election, we'll write the bill. We won the election, we'll write the bill. Well, you know, the election was not about whether Nancy Pelosi and the majority leader in the Senate were going to write the bill. Uh, the election was about a lot of things, and the next election is going to be about the future. Uh, and so we're going to be focused in this election on the future, focused on talking to people in Missouri, talking, uh, seeing our, our, our friends in the media, uh, and even the folks in the media who aren't so friendly because we have to communicate through them. We've got 20 months uh, to talk about the right policies. Uh, and whether it was tax policies, there was one period of time, uh, I stayed at the Capitol 36 straight hours uh, to pass the most family-friendly tax package in the history of the country, and I think we passed it by two votes. Uh, and I was the person there doing that. Last year, I took responsibility for our parties. Uh, focus on the critical problem we face with energy. Uh, and energy was the one domestic issue, frankly, that we owned last year. Uh, because we understand we need to have more American energy, we need to use less of it, and we need to invest in the future. But we need to do that in a way that jobs uh, are, are, are saved, not destroyed. When you take this aluminum plant here in southwest Missouri, uh, you, you raise the electric rates and the utility rates too high, that plant closes down. Uh, and even, you know, we need to figure out where we're going and how to get there. Last uh, two weeks ago, uh, I was asked by the Republican leader in the House to put together a health care task force from people who, from all the committees that are involved in health care so that we have an alternative that's good for patients, that we have an alternative that allows choice and is good for taxpayers. Uh, and we're going to do that, where people know how to choose uh, their health care. And of course, the overwhelming importance of defending the country. Uh, but those are going to be the issues of this campaign. The number one domestic issue right now, of course, is the economy and jobs. Uh, the economy, jobs, how taxes, energy, health care relate to that are important parts of the discussion that I'm about, that I'm starting today uh, with Missourians. And uh, I look forward to those of you who are here being part of that discussion. Uh, help me if you can. Advise me it, when you need to. Uh, and we're going to win this election, and I'll, I'll do that with your help.